so much. At the outset, thank you the organizing team, Shilpa Zoshi, Anjali Bhatt, Nita Deshpande. It is wonderful to be here and appreciate your efforts to put so many nutrition themes and topics together because what we are today is something where I think we are connecting food with us. Seven minutes may not be enough for me to talk about precision nutrition because, can I have my uh, slide on please? Yeah, because it is a topic by itself, it's a topic which actually will trigger your mind thinking something different. I always believe, friends, and I th still feel that most of us also do, that food is information. Food is connect, food is social, food is happiness. And in such a fact where we dietitians talk about macros, microns, calculations, somewhere you have your patients telling you that I want to eat to my satisfaction. I want to enjoy what I feed, but I want my, my body, my mind to help me to learn what I want to eat. So definitely there's something else which we have in us, which may be not so mechanical with the food. So why don't we start looking food as an information and start thinking about something which is called as precision nutrition. Before we get into precision nutrition, I'll just introduce a few terms. Because for me, as I was doing nutrigenomics, I started now looking food into molecular based. Food for me now became as food bioactive components. Food became an information for my body and the dietary components of the food has to have some root mechanism and behavior with me. That's why I said it's seven minutes is not enough for me to talk about such a wonderful relationship which we share with food. I'm sure the audience agrees with me. So now we've evolved from dietetics, specialized dietetics to something called as personalized nutrition. And we have A, B, C, D, which we generally do the anthropometry, biochemical, dietary. Now we have environment, and next we have genetics. So now we have A, B, C, D, E, and G, and this is something which is personalized nutrition. Next we look this as precision. Now precision is the equation of the food with me. How does a curcumin behave with me? How does a polyphenol behave with me? And how do I behave with it? I think it's such a beautiful symbiotic relation which we are trying to explore. And hence the terms nutrigenetic also talks about personalized nutrition for the response of my body, the phenotype response to a specific diet. And nutrigenomics is the response of the individual genes to nutrients. And we cannot forget the role of environment here. We are born with a set of genes. We always relate it. My mother liked it, so I like this. It, it runs in my family. We speak so much about it, and I'm sure each of us patients who come to us, diabetes in my genes, obesity in my genes. We fail to identify exposomes, environment, and we always easy to find the blame on genetics. That's 10%. But I think we are ushering ourselves into a newer way of looking at ourselves, which is integrated systems biology. It's a different way of looking at food and body. Today, as I said, I'll sensitize you. So personalized to precision. Personalized, we talked about all the environmental factors. Precision is one step ahead. My gut microbiome, my food gene interaction, my dietary patterns behavior with me. And I think this needs a lot of technology integration to help me understand what works for a set of population. We are still into an individualized way of looking at it. We started with community nutrition. We are now into personalized nutrition. We are pushing ourselves with the help of genetics to a precision nutrition. And now we want to understand the diet gene role, the diet expressions, the epigenetics. So this is all giving us a newer way of looking at molecules, which is omics, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, all transcription, transcriptomics. So we are ushering ourselves into omics. And I'm sure most of the audience here is dietetics or nutrition background, but I want all of you to start learning the physiology behind the scene. When I eat a meal, what happens to the meal after it gets digested? Absorbed, assimilated, bioactive components, culture of the food which it comes with, the combination meals, because it is not so easy. The equation of the food is different for all of us because as you know, satiety is different. In a house, one meal is cooked for all. We have a similar meal cooked for all the family. There's no different meal cooked. 
but then each one of us perceive that meal in a different way. If my child doesn't, my son doesn't like that vegetable, my daughter may eat it with happiness. The happiness connect with the meal, and in Marathi, we are in Pune, we say that angi lakta. So that's something we are trying to understand. What is in my body which helps me to connect with that food? The molecular targets of that particular in my health is something which I need to understand. And we are actually more into prevention and wellness. Few evidence, few thought process where we already know the role of food and genes. We've talked about gluten, we've talked about caffeine, we've talked about saturated fat. We know lactose. These are genes which are studied. These are all into designer diets now, where it is done to understand how does that coffee behave with me. So fair enough. I know that caffeine is not very good for me. If I consume in a larger quantity, then I have genes to tell me. But now I'm integrating all this. I want to know my soil health. I want to know my food. I want to know my genes. And one step ahead, I want to understand my gut microbiota. Complicated it sounds. And there is no one answer for it because this is so, so different. Each one of us is different. So we are now in precision nutrition talking about metabolomics. Metabolomics, to make you understand in this slide, is the last part of the slide after genome, transcriptome, proteome, is the metabolome, where you know that the molecules of food, the amino acids, the functional foods, the lipids, the fatty acids, how do they behave at my molecular level? How does that food behave with me? That's metabolomics. And maybe now going ahead, I'm looking metabolomics as a key tool to investigate the effect of food on my health. I have to start looking at identifying food-derived biomarkers. In my practice, I started looking at the person's interview method where I ask him, do you feel this suits you? The person say, no, haldi milk is very well taken by my wife, but when I have it, I feel some gastric. Maybe it's a pinch of haldi. But then the person says, I'm not comfortable with that food. That means at a biomolecular level, the response of your molecules towards that food is not very good positive. So it's not just hormone, enzyme, one plus one, two. No, it's not that. It is very much in a research stage to prove it, but we have to start looking at it and integrate it. Few research which have been promoted are in the area where you have fruvedomics study. You can look, look at it where it was a three way of looking 38 participants where they picked up fruit and vegetable group, low carb group, and low fat group. They tried to look into the bioactive components of fruits and vegetables, management of behavior therapy. The behavior, because what's now more important is neuroscience cognitive development, and we want to know how my mind behaves so differently with food. I want to learn, if I'm in Pune, I have to eat sabudana vada, vada pao in the season. Why specific food? Why we get attracted to sweets, somebody gets attracted to salty foods? So yes, there is an evidence at a molecular level which tells me that at my gut microbiota, there are changes. The behavior management with this fruvedomic study, you can explore the study, I don't have so much of time to talk about it the role of fiber in diabetic management. And the last study is very interesting, friends, where it was mapped, the meal pattern, because so much talked about intermittent fasting, two meal, three meal. It was mapped, the algorithm was created to understand what suits a particular individual. And the trend of dietary pattern, and it proved to be beneficial when the technology helps me, the artificial intelligence helps me to understand what is the time of the meal? So interesting, Congress was held as gut microbiome in precision nutrition in USA, Washington. So this interesting Congress, which I found was recent in 2022 March, it was held. It was gut, role of gut microbiome. We talked about metabolomics. I want all of you to understand, explore at a molecular metabolite level what happens. The next is to learn about the role of gut microbiome. It was interesting where one of the statements there I found should be highlighted. Nutrition label is for nutrition education. It is a literacy where it tells you what it has. But I don't know how the ingredients will behave with me. It can be toxic. So this was what the Gut Microbiome Congress tried to tell us. Do you want to?
want me to wait? It did say a few things, interesting things, which I would like to say that the slides will keep coming. After any infection management where you are on drugs, it can be an antiviral drugs or antibiotics, whatever, body takes 30 days to overcome the dysbiosis it has had with that particular antibiotic. So 30 days of span I am giving to my body to work on dysbiosis. So that was a very important statement which I felt we should be highlighted. Circadian rhythm and gut microbiome. These two in a personalized health. Circadian rhythm is coming into a new way we call this chrononutrition. Circadian rhythm is something we have to start looking at, the management, there's a clock gene which tells us. But then the food intake, it's not there. So I think we are far now from understanding, going ahead, evolving ourselves to talk about what is suiting me. And I think individual response does tell me what suits me. It was highlighted now that now we map we map genes, we map food biology, we map soil health. We map soil health, we map all this and combine into integrative systems biology. I think now the next era of nutrition or diet charts in precision nutrition will have a trend which tells me what I should be eating according to my body, food and my interaction. It's a trend, it's an evolution where my technology helps me to learn because I think there's a lot of disturbance, so I'll wait for, can I? Thank you. Again, gone. this instead of touching. So it talked about multi-layered omics approaches. Maybe this is too much for a seven minute session, but somewhere I want to tell you, it has gone again. Somewhere I want to tell you that you have to start looking at host, gut microbiome, and food. These three interrelation. We call it as diet gene expression. We need to optimize the therapy depending upon what the food talks to me, what my body is actually behaving with food, and finally, how my genetics are predisposed. In today, what we are doing in personalized or precision is identifying the food if it suits me or not, lactose, glucose, in PKU diets we do. And in NCD, non-communicable diseases, we talk about metabolites, dietary pattern, keto diets, intermittent fasting, what suits me, definitely a genetic report can tell me circadian rhythm, but end of the day, I'm still into an individual way of looking at it. A personalized diet, any way I was giving as a dietitian, I've integrated genetics into it. I was already identifying environment. Now I think I need to bring in artificial intelligence data analytics. A precision nutrition has to evolve from soil to fork, which we've been talking about. And I think this is where we need to work on prevention and wellness. So friends, we have to start looking differently to our nutrition prescription. To the young dietitians here, stop counting food, one chapati or two chapatis. I mean, of course, you have to do that as a calorie management. But two chapatis, look at how the body behaves with it. 
if the satiety says, I can't go beyond two chapatis, you need to identify how do I give the satiety to the overall area. So there is a human behavior with the food which needs to be interpreted. And I think a detailed screening, A, B, C, D, E, and G, if you can afford, G somewhere counts to affordability. And now I think the T technology will take over our diet prescriptions. I don't think the way that we are moving, it's very fast. So I hope in seven minutes I was able, I don't know seven or more than that, but I was able to give you a brief way of looking at what a metabolomics and precision nutrition with gene diet expression is all about. Thank you so much for the patient hearing.